Hi guys, in one of the comments a user requested I go through and explain the uh, power rule from section 3.2 because they're having a little bit of trouble with it. So the textbook basically shows in the format below down there, that formula of open bracket fg closing bracket derived is the equivalent of f with g derived plus g with f derived. I think that's a terrible way of writing the formula. I'm going to show you a better way that I prefer here. Okay, so most of these techniques in that question are going to require you to use the power rule, or sometimes what I like to call the extended power rule. So let's say you have a function like this, okay? So you have h of t is equal to sine squared t, or sorry, to t squared times sine t. The, basically, you apply an f of t to the first function, so you're just pretending that t squared is equal to f of t, and you apply g of t to the second function. So you're more or less just calling f of t is equal to t squared and g of t equals t. And I always try to sort of make it like a table where immediately underneath, I'm going to write f prime of t and g prime of t. This helps me keep track of it a little bit, and it really helps when you have more terms, which is what I refer to as the extended power rule. So here we can see that the derivative of t squared is just 2t, which you probably learned from section 1.1. And in section 3.3, you learned that the derivative of sine t is just cos t. So here I'm writing out the formula here, and notice that I didn't put the uh, little differentiation symbol on g, I put it on f. And the reason I like to put it on f is because you can think of it as, as initially the little differentiation symbols on the first term, and when you go to second term, it kind of hops to next term, and it kind of keeps hopping and hopping and hopping if you have more and more terms. I'll show you that a little bit more on the next problem. But so for this one, when you're looking at what is f prime to t, you can literally look up on your table and see that it's 2t. For g of t, you can look up on your table and see it's sine of t. And then for the next part, you can look on the table and see that f of t is t squared. And then you can see that g prime of t is cos. And then basically, you're just writing it out practically. And that's it. You've solved the problem using the power rule. So it's not that complicated, but it can get a little bit more tricky when you have two or three or four terms. So let's say you had a function that's a little bit longer. So I've added a third term here, tan t. So now what you have to do is you still have to basically assign 1 to be f, and I'm going to say that f of t is the t squared, and then I'm going to say that the g of t is sine t, and then I'm going to call another term, and I'm just going down the alphabet here, and I'm going to call it h of t. Now if you look, there's three terms here. So once again, I'm going to set up my table. I'm going to start by clearly lining out what is f of t. Well, f of t is the first term, it's t squared. What is g of t? It's sine of t, and h of t is, of course, is the third term, a tan of t. Now directly underneath on my table, the next line is going to be the derivative of each one of these. So f primed, once again it's 2t, nothing's changed. g primed is cos of t, and the derivative of tan is secant squared, which you'll learn in section 3.3. And so now I'm using the same formula again. And notice I have that little derivative symbol on the first f. Oh, for some reason the f is up in the air, it shouldn't be, it should be down like all the rest. Um, and when you move from the first term to the second term, the f kind of jumps from the f to the g, and then it jumps again from the h and the third term. So you can kind of see it sort of leaping one forward each term, and that helps make it nice and easy to keep track of. So if we were just going to focus on the first term and just leave the other two alone for a second, what is f prime of t going to be? Hopefully you could be able to answer that. It's going to be t squared, looking at the table. And what is g of t going to be? Sine t. And what is h of t going to be? Tan t. And so that's our first term. Basically, all that we're doing is we're just looking on the table and literally writing it out as we see it. And so for the second term, we're basically going to have the same formula. And of course, this time, the little derivative symbol has jumped to t. So it's regular f. And what's regular f? Well, it's t squared. What's the derivative of g? It's cos t. And what's the original h? h of t is tan t. And there you go. Now you've got your second term. Basically, you're just writing those three terms out multiplied by each other. And so for the third term, once again, using the same formula, that little derivative symbol is now switched to the h, the third term, because it's in our third term. So f of t, once again, if you look on the chart, what's f of t? It's t squared. What is g of t? Sine t. And finally, what is h prime of t? It's secant squared t. And so once again, we're just writing out the three terms we found on our table and multiplying by each other. So that's all that you really have to do for what I would call an extended power rule. And when I say extending, it's just because there's more in those two terms. There's three terms. 
As you can imagine, if there was a fourth term, we might pick another letter like i of t, and then our h of t expression would have a fourth term, and that little uh, derivative symbol would hop once more to the i of t. Yeah, so the important thing to remember is when you see, let's say the variable is t, and you see two things multiplied that both contain t, it's a very big hint, I need to use the power rule. So if you ever find yourself going, oh look, a multiplication of t, and t is your variable of interest, it's probably going to be an example you need to use the power rule. So here's a pop quiz. Do we need to use the power rule here? So the question is, do you see two terms involving t that are multiplying each other? And the answer is yes. There's a very clear multiplication right here. All right, next pop quiz. Do we need to use the power rule? Well, that sine has a t and the cos has a t and there's a multiplication. So yes, we need to use the power rule. How about this one here? This one, no, because it's not a multiplication, it's an addition. So you have a sine t plus a cos t, not multiplied. So that is the major difference there. And then finally for this one, do we need to use the power rule? Well, in the first term, we have e to t times sine t. So there's two terms with t's and they're multiplied. So that's a yes. In the second term, there's a t and there's a cos of t. So that's two terms with t and they're multiplied. So that's a yes. There's two multiplications, so you'll need to use it twice, once on each part. And I'm just going to go through and show you how to solve this one. So let's practice the method I showed you, okay? So first of all, let's, let's label our terms. Our first one is going to be f of t. Our second one is going to be g. Oops, that table wasn't supposed to come out quite yet. And then you have your h of t. And finally, you have your i of t. So now let's make our table. So I'm just going to encourage you to just pause the video if you're watching this and write out this little table here and try to fill in the f, the g, the h, and the t, which you should be able to do literally just by looking at the problem. So I'll give you a chance to pause it and... All right, hopefully you got this answer. If not, um, just kind of try to figure out where you went wrong. But now the next step is we have to take the derivative of each one of these. So the derivative of e to the t is just e to the t. Hopefully you know that from section one point, or sorry, 3.1. If you don't, that's okay. Uh, the derivative of sine of t, you learn in section 3.3, .3, so you might not know it yet. It's cos of t. The derivative of h of t is just, or sorry, der the derivative of t is just one. And finally, the derivative of cos of t is negative sine. So I'm just gonna fill those in here for us. So now we have our table made. So the next step is you kind of have to write out our formula. So we're basically gonna have two examples of the power rule using two terms because there's that little plus there. So for this formula, I'm doing f prime times g of t. And so the f is starting on the, or the little prime symbol starting on the first function, and then it's jumping over to the second function or second term. And then I'm basically doing it again. This time, the little derivative symbol is starting on the h, and then it's jumping to our second term, the i, with the second term. And now, using the table above, try to see if you can fill in each part. So if you want, go ahead and pause the video, try to write it up by hand, and whenever you start it again, you will see the answer. Okay, and so that is basically all the parts written out from the table. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory where the numbers came from. I didn't explicitly draw the arrows this time, but hopefully you guys are able to figure it out. Uh, the only thing I do on the second line is I just clean it up a little bit. There's an E of T in both of the first two expressions. So you can factor it out if you want. It makes it look a little bit cleaner. Uh, the H prime to t was just a 1. You don't really need to write one time something, so I just got dropped it. And finally, I changed the t times negative sine t just into a negative t sine t because it makes it a little bit nicer looking. And yeah, that's pretty much how you're going to do the power rule or the extended power rule. I kind of like that method because whenever I'm doing it, if I have three terms, I just write h prime to t, and then I basically write fgh, 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 as an example, and then I just, in the first term, write the little derivative symbol in the first term, then write it in the middle term, then write it in the last term, and I'm done. Then I basically just filled in from the table and you're good to go. Hopefully this strategy helps you guys, and if you have a particular question you need help with or something you want explained, uh, go ahead and just leave a comment down below, or if you want, feel free to email me a picture of the problem you're working on. My email address is in the description. And please consider liking this video so other people can see it. Have a great day, guys.